Yeah, good morning. We're going to go through a little Bible reading here in the next few weeks, so let's have a word of prayer first. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here today, to hear your word, to be in church, Lord, and we just pray that you'll lead and guide in their lives and watch over each and every one of us. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. The last few weeks... Phil went over past history. So I'm going to jump us over into the future. So we're going to go from past to future for what's going to happen. But here's the thing that you need to realize when you're looking at the book of Revelation or things like that. That, you know, the world is not falling to pieces. It's just that all the pieces are falling in place. So, you know, it's happening one day at a time right in front of us, you know, as actually faster than you realize. Because from 1948, when Israel became a nation, till now, things have really sped up. So, how close is the clock Mm -hmm. to being at 12 o'clock? You know, and most, unfortunately, most churches don't talk about the book of Revelation. They don't even believe in the book. They believe it's, it's historical or it's irrelevant or what, whatever it might be. But, yeah, that's another good thing, it's symbolic. Let me, let me turn this board around and I'll give you an idea of what... Where are we gonna where we're we gonna go here with this? Oh look. Somebody's been here already. So let's kind of start it. Let's let's kind of start at the beginning. What's the timeline of the tribulation? The tribulation is seven years. A total of seven years. So you have three and a half years in the first section, three and a half years in the second section, which is a total of 42 months or 1,260 days. So when does the tribulation start? Does anybody know? On the peace treaty. Well, no, the peace treaty comes... The peace treaty comes over into here. Everybody talks about the rapture. The rapture is actually not, the word rapture is not mentioned in the Bible. It's explained, but it's not mentioned as the word rapture. You have four types of theories here about the rapture. You have people that believe in pre-trib, which the rapture is going to take place, the church is going to be taken out before the seven-year period starts. And you have mid-trib, people believe that the church is going to be taken out in the middle of the tribulation. Then post, after all this is taken, after everything is taken place, the church is going to be taken out. And then you have the pan people. Does anybody know who they are? No? Not even a guess? Those are the people that believe that everything's going to pan out. <laughs> <laughs> these, these guys are really not. <laughs> I just put that in there. <laughs> you know, to, to kind of lighten things up a little bit. Look. <laughs> That, the book of Revelation is pretty serious. In the book of Revelation, there's a lot of symbols used. And we'll go over some of those symbols and see what they represent. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I can't understand. I just don't understand the book of Revelation. It's not that difficult, really, if you use the Old Testament with the New Testament to figure it out. You know, if you use Ezekiel and Daniel 
and some of the other books of the Bible, it, it, it it's pretty much self-explanatory. When you say that uh, the shirts are going to be taken out, is it going to be taken out by another faith? Or by no. People? When the, the church is the bride of Christ. Right. So the bride of Christ is going to come and get the church and take the church out. That's the beginning of this tribulation. Okay? Then... That's three and a half years, then it gets worse till the end of the seven years. Now, how do you figure out what all this is about, okay? So let's go back, let's go back here. I hope I got my math right. There might be a math teacher here. <laughs> if you go, turn your Bibles over to uh, Daniel 9, verse 25. I believe I've got that right. So, the 49 years. When did the 49 years? This is broken up into three sections, this time frame. The 490 years is at the end of the tribulation. Okay? So, the first 49 years started when? It started when the Jews started to rebuild Jerusalem. Okay? Okay? This 49 years is also broken up into several different times. It, it's not consecutive, okay? This, it took the Jews 141 years to get everything rebuilt in Jerusalem. So that's 49 years. So that stops. So where does the 434 years come in? When does it end? The 434 years ended at Christ's crucifixion, okay? So now, to get to 490, we got seven years left. That's the third set of figures, all right? So if you add 49, 34, and 7, you get to 490. So at 490 years, the tribulation is going to end, all right? That, that's the numbers. Is that right? I think that's absolutely correct, Brother Brandon. Okay, I got my math right. Good. <laughs> I didn't check the math, though. But it was <laughs> Theology's good. <laughs> okay. Well, that's the math you, uh, you, math. Can, you can check the math later. But most of this is explained in Daniel, in that section that I just told you there, okay? I mean, okay. it's... Daniel, Daniel 9.25. I think it's 25, 26, right in there. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's, that's correct. 70 weeks. 70 times 7 is 490. That's right. So you add all these together, you, you add these three figures together, and you get 490, okay? So you talk back to symbols. There's a lot of symbols used in... Revelation. Why were the symbols used? And that goes back to John. Okay? I'm just kind of giving you a little brief overview here till we really get into the meat of things. Symbols were used because when the book of Revelations was written, if they didn't use the symbols... The actual book of Revelations would have never been published because there's things in there that the Romans didn't want seen or heard of. You couldn't talk about Rome. You couldn't say anything bad about Rome. If you did, you were in big, big bad trouble, okay? The number seven. How many times in the Bible is the number seven used? Anybody got a guess? A lot is right. It's over 500 times. I think it's somewhere like 530, but I just used 500 and round it off. So symbols are very important. So let's take it. I've got this chart here. I'm going to hand out, or I'll get Charlie or somebody to hand out this chart. I want each one, one per family or whatever. 
Now, if you don't want it, that's okay. Leave it here, we'll use it. Because to have these printed up was not a cheap thing, <laughs> okay? Because I had to have them specially, specially printed up. Charlie, you wanna? I'll give one to Miss Janet right here. Thanks. Just one per family. Well, if you look at this chart, it starts at the beginning. There's a couple of things on this chart that I differ from. And one of them is this right here is the, 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 the rapture. I believe, and we can argue this or talk about it or whatever, because everybody, there's all different opinions. I believe the church, Christ is going to come for his church before the tribulation starts. Mm -hmm. I agree. I don't see, and there's a lot of arguments about this, I don't see why God would wait till the middle of the tribulation. So if the church... Is the bride of Christ, okay? Let's say that you were going to get married again. You wouldn't go and beat up your bride before you married her, would you? No. <laughs> so it doesn't make, to me, it doesn't make sense that the church would not come out before the tribulation. I know there's all kinds of theories out there and all kinds of people. So it's, this is just what I believe, so. You can believe whatever you want, you know. Okay. So we've covered that. So let's go back to the number seven. Just to see, and you'll see the number seven in the book of Revelations a lot of times. Okay. So the number seven in creation. Let's, let's just take a look at that. For a second. Seven days of creation, right? Okay. So God rested on the seventh day, okay? Seven original planets. Of course, there's people in Washington, D.C. that think they were nine, but oh well, there were only seven. <laughs> seven continents. Seven colors in the rainbow. You know, to me, this rainbow thing is kind of a touchy, touchy thing. One of these days, we're going to take that rainbow back from some people. Amen. Seven seas. Seven wonders of the world, okay? That's just a few of those sevens that are related to creation, all right? So let's look at some sevens. On humans, seven openings in your head, two eyes, two nose, mouth, two ears, okay? <laughs> seven cognitive abilities of in humans, seven stages of grieving, seven stages from birth to death, seven months a fetus will respond to stimuli. Seven bones in mammals, okay? Seven numbers that you can recall, just like that. What are those seven numbers? Your phone number. Anything longer than that, you have a hard time getting, it, getting them all together. Everybody can kind of remember their phone number, right? If you don't, well, we'll get you some help. <laughs> Miss Ruth says no. <laughs> okay. Seven deadly sins. If you want to look that up, look over in Proverbs 616. All right. In, mo in a lot of cases, 
A lot of marriages only last seven years. All right? So if you want... Huh? I'm exempt from that seven Well, I'm kind of exempt from that, too. I think Ruth and I are working on 54. So if you want some references to all that stuff, Revelation 11, 2 and 3, 12, 6, 13, 5, Daniel... 9.27, Jeremiah 37, Gen Genesis 20-9. Okay, well, tw chapter 29, 1 through 30 verse. So, the book of Revelation was penned by John. So John wrote what? 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and Revelation, Okay. I mean, the Gospel of John, yeah. So, John was the last apostle. Is that correct? I believe so. If I get something wrong, just raise your hand and say, whoop, I'm not too sure about that. Okay. And he was born, or he was lived in the city of Bethsaida with his younger brother, James. And John was really a big part of Jesus Christ's inner circle. So John, being the last surviving apostle, was prisoned on the Isle of Patmos. The Isle of Patmos is off the coast of Turkey. Okay, it's an island about... I think it's six miles long, six miles wide. It's just a rock. So why was John put there? John was also boiled in oil. It's a wonder he even lived. You know, but God had a purpose for, it, for John to pen this book so that we would know what's coming in the future, okay? John was also in the Garden of Gethsemane. And the book of Revelation was written about 95 A.D., okay? Somewhere in that, that, that time frame. So is there anything else you need to want to know about John? Tell me. Okay. Now there's basically three things that are going to come during this, this time or up, up to the time that the church is taken out. We're going to talk a little bit about society here. One of the things that's going to initiate this is decay in society. And we can see that every day. Okay? All you got to do is walk out here and look at that mailbox. That, every, that mailbox is broken into, I don't know how many times. Five or six times. Yeah, at least. Okay? The lack of teaching in the church. There's where we're really having a problem. Is that there's not enough people in classes like this to really hear what's going on. Okay? An escalating crisis in the Middle East. You hear that on the news all the time. All this that's going to have, look, the United States, everybody says, well, where's the United States? I have no idea. The United States is not mentioned in here. Okay? Everything that's taken place in the book of Revelation is generated out of the Middle East. Okay? And we'll get into that a little later on. Any questions? How are we doing so far? I try to simplify this, self, because I'm just a, kind of a simple guy. Okay? So, the book of Revelation is broken up into different sections. You have chapter 1, which kind of describes Christ as the high priest. 
Okay? Then you've got chapters 2 and 3, which talks about the church. Now, after those first three chapters, the church is basically not mentioned anymore, okay? So from chapter 4 to chapter 22 is basically the Lord's Day. All this is going to come down to God taking back the deed to the world. Right now, Satan's kind of got a little control over what's happening here on earth. Business. You're back in business yeah. oh, okay. We're back in business. Can you hear me all right now? So let's take a second and look a, look at what the application of the book of Revelation is to our country, America, okay? And here's, here's what I've written down. I'll just kind of read this. God raised up this nation with the purpose of using our great natural resources and technical ingenuity to spread the gospel. God has poured out his blessings on this nation. Is that a true statement or not? I thought it was. Okay. The nation has become enamored with its wealth and power and has turned away from God. You took God out of church. Out of, well, not out of church. Well, some of them did. <laughs> you took it out of, out of schools. What happened to the schools? Yeah. Come on, Bill Frank. They went... <laughs> <laughs> they went downhill. Okay? If they want to solve this problem, put God back in. Amen. You know? Money has become our greed and has become our motivator. Most, I say most people today, that's uh, all they can think about is making money they don't have time enough to hour or whatever to come to church to hear the word of God. God has been put on the back burner in this country. This country was founded on godly principles. But you've got a lot of people 
that are running this country that no longer believe in that. Okay? So what's our national pastime? Here's uh, football. <laughs> Some things are okay. A little bit. <laughs> I mean, a little of something is okay. Okay. I wrote these things down. Gambling has become a national pastime. You've got casinos. If you are a Native American and decide that the land that you're living on now, you want to put a casino there, that's okay. Or anywhere else, I guess. Sex is becoming a session. Look at television. Look what's on television. I mean, you can't even hardly watch a, an ad on TV today without having some kind of perversion. We've become the largest consumer of drugs. Look what's happening down on the southern border right now. How much they're killing their they're killing our young people. If you kill the young people in this country, we've got nowhere to go. That's why we need more young people in this church. Because people like me are not going to be here forever. You know, we need to replenish, we need to replenish these bodies that are not going to be here. I mean, I may be here next week. Tomorrow? Well, who knows? I'm hoping I'll be here just long enough for it to be raptured out. Me too. You know, that will cheat the mortician. <laughs> okay. Kick God out of schools. Already mentioned that. Legalized abortion. This country has killed 60 million babies. Several generations of children. Okay? How many? 60 million. That's, and that may be low. One of the worst things that's happened is this country has tried to destroy the family unit. No fathers. You have no leaders in these families. And that's a big problem. That's why you have all this crime. Because there's no, lead, there's no fathers to lead these people, these young children. Not that the mothers are not doing a good job, and some of them are, some of them aren't, but if you have that family unit, it makes a whole lot of difference. We've been, we're endorsing more perversion. This country one of the leading countries in pornography. Okay? I mean, like I say, you can, you can look on a TV ad and kind of, there years ago, there's things that are on there now that you wouldn't even think about being on there. You know? And, yeah, and we have become the more, actually the more polluter of the earth. The United States is a real problem with this. You know, we as Christians, and it's hard, I know it's hard to do, need to, you need to vote for people that you think is going to do the right job. You know, I mean, even though you do, they don't, <laughs> unfortunately. Okay, any questions? How we doing on time? Oh, we're good. God, one way that God changes things is by what they call remedial judgment. Okay, what is a remedial judgment? That is a judgment that God puts on the earth or a person or something to make them change the direction that they're going, okay? 
So a remedial judgment could be described as war, okay? That a war would break out. Of course, we, it's, it says right here in the Bible, rumors of wars are all, all the time. It, it's been a war going on ever since it, almost the beginning of time. 1960s, when the sexual revolution really got started. I worked in Berkeley in the 1960s, okay? I worked for Lucky Stores up on University Avenue, pretty close to the college. And I'm telling you, it was bad. It was bad enough that all of us, we carried our knives in with us, we carried our knives out. And we had to have armed guards standing by the meat truck when we unloaded the meat and stuff to keep people from stealing it. That's how bad it was then. It's even worse now because you've got all these teachers and these colleges and these schools are not teaching. They're indoctrinating. So we need to get some people in here so we can indoctrinate them in what's right. You know, that's, uh, and that's not, only 9% of the people on, in the United States today will be in church. 9%. And it may be even lower than that now. Huh? Well, yeah, I mean, I was given the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Give them, give them the benefit of the doubt. Go on, Terry. How many people in America claim to be Christians? Less than 17 percent. 17 percent profess themselves to be Christians, but you got to really watch out when you use that word Christian. And I'll give you a perfect example. Ruth and I had some rental houses, and. This lady rented a house. Oh, yes, I'm a Christian, and I'm going, okay. But before it was all over, she was really not, because she was one of the worst renters that we ever had. <laughs> okay? So <laughs> ever since then, when somebody says that I'm a Christian, I kind of take a little step back and go, okay, let's really see if you are, you know, being a Christian is a, is a buzzword, you know. I was raised in the Catholic Church. Well, I consider myself to be a Christian. But I really wasn't a real Christian until I got saved. You know, until I accepted Christ. And that was in uh, 71. Is that right? Baptized. I just want to add to that thing about this, uh, the fatherless children. It's not just they're fatherless, they're motherless too, because I, as a single mom, had to go work and have to leave my kid with strangers yeah. at school, and it was difficult being a mom and a dad. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it, you know, but most of the time the fathers walk off. And they leave leave things with the mothers, and that it's just a bad situation. Anytime, anytime you're breaking up this family group, it's bad, you know. And like they say, for every Mickey, there's a Minnie, but that's not always true either. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Can I interject? A sure. My husband worked for NASA, and he found out. Well, he didn't. He didn't had never gone to church before. He met me, and then he went with me to church, and he accepted the Lord. And when he joined this group of with people with NASA, he found out that they all believed in Jesus. Hmm, that's and good. That was very interesting. Well. The one thing about that, Miss Janet, is that believing in Jesus and accepting Jesus is two different animals. It's two different, you know, I'm not saying that they, they weren't. I'm just, I'm just trying to give you a little 
definition here. Sure. Satan believes in Jesus, but doesn't accept him. He's doing everything he can, and we're going to prove what he's going to do. It's going to take a while. There's plenty of food back there. We should be done about 6 or 8 o'clock tonight. <laughs> I see there's plenty of food back there. All right, let's get back to, let's get back to it here, and we'll finish this part up here in just a minute or two. So what is the Christian view? Here's the question. Does absolute moral truth exist? It does, but it's hard to find because nowadays a lot of people are not really telling the truth. Is the Bible accurate in all its teachings? I haven't found anything wrong in it yet. When I do, I'll let you know, or I'll tell the pastor, and he can figure it out. <laughs> He's the one who went to college, not me. Okay? Is Satan a real being or just a symbolic force? Satan is a real thing. Okay? He's not just... Uh, a lot of people think, well, yeah, 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 yeah. And the devil made me do it. Well, that's maybe true. The devil may have made you do it. Okay? Can people earn their way to heaven? No. You can't buy your way to heaven. There's only one way to get to heaven. You have to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. You can't pay your way. You know, and there's a lot of, there, I see a lot of businesses have, statues with money on them and all that. That's not going to work. It's never worked and it's not going to work. All right? Did Jesus live a sinless life? Absolutely. That's exactly right. Because without Christ living a sinless life, everything else is, is no good. You know? He came here He's the one that paid for our sins, died on the cross, was resurrected. And there's no other way this can go. Okay? Any questions? You sure? Okay. So next week we'll start into the book of Revelation. So starting at chapter 1 and we'll just kind of... I'm not going to get too deep into this because... I'm going to give you kind of an overview because it takes a lot to do this. I mean, I ask Ruth, I've been reading and looking and, you know, to most, most of the book of Revelation can be, a lot of it is found in the Testament. If you read Daniel and Ezekiel, it's telling you what's going to happen in Revelation. So it's not hard to figure out. You just have to know where to go. Okay? And we'll go through that. And I'll start at chapter 1 next week and give you the basic overview of what's happening. And then you can take it. You can take it. And we'll go, we'll go a week or two or whatever and then take a break and then you know, but I want to take you through the whole book of Revelation, one chapter at a time. And if you've got questions, I may not have all the answers, you know, because I'm not a theologian for one thing. I'm just a poor old country boy that used to cut meat. Yeah. And once in a while, I cook a breakfast or two. You know, coming up, yeah. So, okay, are we good? All right, let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the time that we do have together. And we just pray that you'll be with the pastor as he gives the message today. And we just ask you to be with us and lead God in our lives and watch over our families. And we pray for the people that are leading this country, Lord, 
that you'll turn their hearts around, open their hearts up, and give them the strength to do the right thing. And we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.